Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, Sales Whisper, your host. Today, we have a crazy woman. That's all I'm going to say. Lauren Bailey is insane. She's insane about doing inside sales. Maybe she's insane because she does inside sales. Uh, but she was a hoot. We had a lot of fun. Uh, did it over video. I may share the video. Um, got a little pause in there. You'll hear um, delivery guy showed up. But hey, just keeping it real. You know what I mean? Uh, but inside sales, she shared some interesting facts about its growth. Uh, some facts I was not aware of. Uh, I have had help with inside sales for many years uh, at many different companies, uh, particularly in high tech. Uh, and it was a great help. I train inside salespeople as well because it's really one and the same. You know, part of the Make Every Sale course, I talk about how every little touch point is a sale. You have to do everything right. How do people answer the phone? How do people represent you? What do their emails look like? What's the subject line? How's the format? How are they online? All right. What's their presence online? So everything matters. So I'm always working with the entire team, inside sales, outside sales, sales management, the executive team, marketing. Nothing exists in a, in a vacuum. Nothing exists in a silo. you got to bring everything together with your company. But bringing in specialists like this, you know, I keep talking about digging deep, right? You've got to get things right. Go way deep in each area. Get it right before you branch out. So today we're going to get it right with inside sales. Uh, So you are in for a treat if you need to dig deep on something. And maybe the fact that you're not deep on anything means it's time to dig deep. Go to digdeep.today. Let's work together. It's super affordable. Uh, You're going to get a detailed questionnaire. It's going to make you work. Then we're going to get together on at least one, probably a couple of different recorded calls, uh, video share, audio, screen share, and I'm going to help you sort some things out. It's the most affordable package I offer for giving one-on-one help. So check that out, digdeep.today. And if you're ready to commit to becoming a professional salesperson and have access, unlimited access for life before I change it to an annual subscription, go to makeeverysale.com. Makeeverysale.com. Now let's bring on Lauren. Lauren Bailey, Factor 8, all the way from Hot Phoenix. Welcome to the Sales Podcast. How the heck are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm hot. You well, know, you said it, not me. Uh, you know, you're hot. That's why you're on the show. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas, baby. So what is right. this factor eight? You're inside sales advisor. You know where you want to go. We know how to get you there. Oh, really? Oh, oh really? really? Yeah, unless I'll you be- were directions in California, and then you're really kind of on your own, Wes. Exactly. You know what? So here, here's my loaded question for you. You ready? Are are you ready? Do people even really know where they want to go? (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, but we got you covered there too. So here's why we, here's exactly why we did that. I love that you asked the question because so often clients find us because they are new to inside sales, right? So this is a channel that is growing faster and faster and faster, right? 10 to 13 X field sales, depending on what study you read. What, what, what? Yeah, inside, inside sales, is growing, sales is growing that fast? faster than field sales by a rate of 10 to 13x. Well, why is that? No joke. Well, I think there's a lot of reasons why, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll dive into it. But first, I'm going to answer your first question. Do people know where they want to go? Um, yeah, they want to get to inside, right? Because they want to have a lower cost of sale because it's what the customer is demanding and more responsiveness. They need to have a greater reach, right? It doesn't make sense to put a rep necessarily in you know, Chandler, Arizona or Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So more and more companies are moving to the inside. And by the way, I think it also follows the product life cycle, right? As, as more margin gets sucked out of different products and, and you don't have to explain a concept to people, it's more commoditized. You get to inside sales and they need to web and self-serve. But my point is this, they usually find us after they've been doing it a couple of years. So they, they take a top field rep or manager or leader and say, hey, we need to figure out this inside thing. Go, go ahead and launch it for us. And, you know, here's a, a crappy CRM or here's no tools at all. And here's a, a couple of customer service reps that didn't make it and see if you can prove this concept. And lo and behold, they still do because the market's demanding it. And then they get around to buying tools. 
that's usually what's next, right? Okay, well, I figured this out in Excel. Let me actually get a decent CRM and let me get some reporting. And then after they look at some reporting, that's when they call us because, <laughs> oh, crap, we need to be doing better than we are. Or we've been doing it a couple of years, but now they're getting serious and I need to triple my team or triple my revenue or my market share. Let's get serious about this and get some advice. I'm not sure what I need, but I need some help. Right. And that's when they come to us. Um, so this is interesting. I mean, I, I come from a world of outside sales. Right. Um, good. Oh, this is going to be a good debate. Gotta, gotta look, gotta see the whites of their oh, eyes, yeah. baby. We got Listeners, if you could see his face right now. I gotta grab him by the back of the neck and say, press real hard. The third copy is yours, sir. <laughs> right? Everyone uh, loves that, by the way. I mean, oh, yeah, they, they love it. They love it when yeah. you talk dirty to them. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, it, I was more of a complex sale. Uh, right. I spent a lot of time in technology, yep. with demoing stuff. Uh, but I did lay the groundwork with inside sales. I did have an inside sales support team uh, mm-hmm. at most of my companies, at least even rarely was it one-to-one, but at least I'd have one maybe that I shared with other reps. Um, and But it's interesting you're saying that it's growing that fast. It, yeah. it, the customer uh, just because of so much data that's online are, are they comfortable with their own knowledge that they're finding and they just need to speak to a human being to kind of assuage any fears? Uh, so, so they're okay doing this over the phone and they don't need to press the flesh? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And, and there's a couple points that you mentioned in that. One of them is they're smarter, right? Our consumer is smarter today than they've ever been. What's the stat around that? Somewhere around 70% of the buying process already done before they talk to a sales rep. Right. Two, we're an on-demand society. So if I've got a question and I want to talk to somebody because I'm in the middle of researching this right now, I don't want to wait for Wes to drive over here, you know, three weeks from Tuesday and have a face-to-face meeting. I have moved on. I'm going to be in your area next week with Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday oh, morning. Or Monday morning work. Yeah, right? <laughs> so so that's part of it too. Um, and, and, and yes, people are expecting that on-demand knowledge. They're a little bit more knowledgeable and we're used to buying things remotely. Now, it wasn't always the case. So I'm going to make you feel a little outdated here. But 20 years ago, I remember teaching IBM reps when IBM went direct, right? I was in charge of their training. And I was literally trying to convince them, sure, you can buy a computer over the phone. Well, now you wouldn't even think about having to go and see a field rep, right? You just do that. Go back 10 years ago, I was launching inside sales for SAP and literally had the same conversation. Yes, you can buy software over the phone. And so I've got clients that are in even more, um, what do I want to say, established industries than that, that are still just getting to inside sales. Yes, you can sell paper over the phone. (laughs) They do not need to see somebody face to face. But now look at it from another point of view, not just the customer and, and the responsiveness aspect, but the flip side of that is, do you think it really works to do drive bys anymore? Right? I mean, I did field sales for a while too. Hey, while you're in the area, let's see if we can go get, let's do some cold calls. Let's knock on doors. Well, how successful are we there? So even the industries that you're still selling a complex idea where you're still teaching them, right? We haven't crossed the chasm, if you will. Um, well, I, we have I'm to in SoCal. We still do drive-bys down here. I'm just saying. <laughs> West side, West. Just a little different. <laughs> I love so, it. So what does somebody need to do to do inside sales well? Mm. So, of course, that's going to depend on your model. You talked about a team model, right? A field rep has a couple guys on the inside to support, and I'm here to tell you that that is an outdated idea, Wes. What? Wait, what? Uh-huh. It's outdated because they don't just have to be support people anymore, right? In fact, some newer companies out there, CDW has one of the best models and um, they have the inside rep as the quarterback. And it then the outside rep is basically being sent out as needed. Right? So I can move, I can manage the whole thing here, but then I'm going to send somebody out on the outside if necessary. Hey, I need to ask you if I can pause for one second. Man, pausing. All right, fine. I know, right? I, I Hopefully I hit it just... So after four years, probably 270 episodes, I have to go back and look. This was the first time anyone has ever had me pause the interview. But Lauren (laughs) Bailey is so excellent. Her knowledge is so valuable. 
we did that. Now, back to your program, already in progress. So already in progress. Think? How do we do it well, right? So you're saying, so CDW has a great model. So this is very interesting. Is the inside salesperson the highly paid expert and the outside salesperson is more of the support or yeah, are they kind of equal? It hardly ever happens that way, right? I mean, t- right. in today's world, the field guy is making double what the inside guy is and the inside guy is, is supporting them. That was yesterday's world. Now, today's world, we still have some outside field guys, but they're on the big accounts, the big money, the enterprise. They're still making a little more. They've been around the company longer. They know the product better, right? Right. Um, in, a, in the most evolved inside sales models like CDW, they're pretty darn equal. Okay. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty darn equal. So your, your original question is, what do you have to do to do it well? Well, that starts with what's my strategy and what's my goal, right? So that's going to help me determine what model I need. So for instance, some companies will say, listen, we are complex sale. It's high dollars. We're going to keep a field model. However, they're going to need some support to help land and expand within companies. They're going to need some support to answer those questions quickly because Wes is out in the field. Um, we're going to need them to help order process. So that's when you're going to have a team model with the field as lead. But there are other folks who say, all right, great. I can have field reps in my NFL cities, for instance, but I need coverage in the rural areas. So they're still going to have a discrete model, which means everybody owns their own accounts, right? I'm not sharing a quota with you in the field. But my inside team is going to have their territory set up based on geo, right? So everybody outside the major city basically goes into the inside team. And Uh, other companies will use it for reach. I need to expand market share because an inside person can have 10, 20 conversations a day, whereas a really great field rep is consistently getting two or three. Right. Right. So in that case, maybe I'm buying lists, maybe I'm doing inbound lead generation, but I need to talk to as many people as, as, as I can as quickly as possible. And that's a different inside strategy. So each one requires a slightly different rep, a slightly different sales process. Right. right? And of course, comp models and everything to go with that. So I'm, I'm still floating on cloud nine. I had my interview with Jeffrey Gittimer recently. Um, and he told yeah, me. So I, I'm, I'm feeling really important right now. And he told me, you know, that he, I'm one of the few people he still subscribes to and actually listens. So I cut that out and sent the clip to my mother. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a. I'm 47 and still want my mom's approval. Right. Um, I bet he didn't make you pause. So, uh, you know, he did not. Mm. Uh, but, you know, he's he's not Lauren Bailey. <laughs> he's a class act. But uh, uh, what a good dude. But uh, so we talked about making cold calls and outbound calls mm-hmm. uh, in the B2B world. Is there still a place for outbound calling? Yeah. See, I, people think get a lot of traction with cold calling is dead. And, and I think it depends on how you're defining that. So I want to be really clear that inside sales does not equal cold calling. The vast majority of our work and our clients are not cold calling. They are just reaching out to customers in a much more productive and efficient and cost-effective way than field sales, or they're supporting their field sales teams. Does that make sense? So are you treating... Now, is there a whole nother layer? Like companies will call them like a, I don't even know what, always an acronym, SDR or something, or sure, like yeah. a, a field development yeah, rep, area development rep. Basically, yep. are they the cold callers? Sometimes, sometimes. Okay. So there's about six different types of inside sales reps. And we've recently aligned all of our offerings to those. So I'm watching his head spin, viewers or listeners. His six. head is literally swiveling on his neck right now. But none of them necessarily have to be cold callers. So I'll give you an example. The most popular or biggest trend in inside sales rep right now is that SDR that you talked about, sales development rep, sometimes called biz dev, sometimes called lead gen, sometimes called business development rep. So those are all the different acronyms or titles, if you will, for this position. And this position can take an inbound or an outbound, a warm or a cold, but their whole purpose is to queue it up qualify it, get them to lean in a little bit, and then pass off to an inside sales executive, a field rep, a closer, all different names for them, who's going to dive in a little deeper and try to make the sale, or at least step one of the sale, right? Oftentimes in the software world, that means a demo. Okay. That makes sense? Sure. Yeah. So those guys might be cold, right? There are absolutely companies out there that are buying lists right now. And say, we've got something brand new. I don't have a marketing department or my marketing department sucks. So I'm not getting enough inbound traffic and I've got, you know, market share goals I'm trying to meet. 
I'm going to go buy a list and I'm going to hammer it with my biz dev team. Right. And they're going to go see who might be, you know, who's, who's who in school out now, there and queue them up. Now for the, for the truly small business that may be struggling with marketing, because I see this all the time um, and, and working with CRMs and software, like we were talking sure. before, we turn on better than most, like we turn on recorder, but you know, most of these platforms, salesforce.com, HubSpot's a little better with having a plan to create the leads. Uh, but Infusionsoft, Entreport, Active Campaign, whatever, they really pick up after the lead is generated. After, well, after the traffic is coming to your right. site. They've right. called in, they've visited your website, they've come to your booth, uh, and now you can enter them into your database, sure. and now you can drip on them. But yep. most people struggle with that getting them to come in in the first place, right? It's like yeah. the chef that says, I make a very good souffle. I just don't have anybody coming to my restaurant. Right. You know, so for the smaller businesses that may not have the money to, um, to generate all these great leads, um, is that, I mean, they're going to need an inside sales person. They need somebody banging the phones. Hey, right? listen, they both do in your scenario. Okay. So Infusionsoft does a great job, brings them in right from the trade show or whatever. And their idea is to warm them, to nurture them. And very often they'll score them, right? Hey, these guys are, well, what happens once it hits a score? You're assigning a task. Somebody's got to call that guy. Marketing cannot close it and you can't sell over email. It just doesn't work. So you right. still need a sales rep, whether it's field or inside. Yeah. But you're exactly right. Some smaller companies are saying, look, I've got X to invest and I can go the marketing route and try to drive them to me, but maybe I don't have the time for that or the expertise, or I can invest that money in sales and I'm going to hire five heads and I'm going to buy some great lists and I'm going to go pound the damn phones. Right. Both viable options. Most companies are doing a little bit of both, right. which is one of the struggles we see out there. Okay. Right? You've got a sales rep who's got a list or his own, you know, old customers, however he's creating that list. And then marketing kicks up something and says, hey, we've scored them a 10. Half the reps I've sat with in my many, many, many years of doing this have no freaking idea what that means, right? Like I've literally sat with reps. We'll do, we do this great service called a benchmark, which is how we help people figure out where they need to go. And I sit side by side with reps and I'm like, hey, what's this little cool down here? This, this little tool, it's blinking. It says somebody's on your website. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. Right. And so it makes every marketer listening to this groan. But that's part of sort of that, that goal and the, and the strategy that's trouble. So that's, that's one tip. You know what, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of glad though, because that gives you and me work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Job security. Everybody listen to this. Just ignore that little blinky blue thing. Call Lauren, call me, we'll give you a quote. We'll do some training. Your sales oh, yeah. will go up, but you know, just ignore that little blinky thing. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. You can continue to ignore them. <laughs> Call care. us and for a nominal fee, we'll explain how to leverage that right. so you can two and five and 10 extra revenue. Okay. Exactly. So now back to our program. Exactly. So, so actually here's a great place for a plug. That's one of the things that we find, but here's what, here's the other thing that happens. And here's where we really specialize is when that sales process starts, nine out of 10 reps call when somebody gets kicked over from marketing and say, Hey, I see that you downloaded our white paper. Uh, is there anything I can help you with? Mm -hmm. uh, or the, here's one I just loved. Hey, um, I must have gotten your number from marketing. You probably downloaded something or clicked on something or visited our site a couple times. And uh, yeah, what, what can I do for you? <laughs> you can get but, off the phone, you idiot. But that's that's like so friendly. It's very non pushy. Uh, I, are you saying there's a better way? I'm saying there's a better way, right? <laughs> and it's sad because a lot of the sales managers out there don't get that strategy either. So they'll listen to it and say that, hey, it was really friendly. I like your tone. Yeah. Oh my God, that's not what's wrong with that call. I know. Right? He's banging his head on the microphone, listeners. So mm. it's like, come on, let's add some value to the customer. Let's get smart about that. And so that's the combination. That's what's missing is you can't just teach somebody sales skills. Here's how to say it well. You have to combine it with some strategy and some process. Right. Here's when you call, here's why you're calling, here's the goal of your call, and now let's make your call sound better. And when we combine those things, we get incredible results because nobody's doing that combination out there. But, but Lauren, I'm, you know, scripts just really make me feel just cold and impersonal. 
um, I really just kind of have to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this, I I can't really be tied down with a script. Well, you're setting me up to disagree with you, but I agree a hundred percent. I hate scripts. Scripts suck. Savvy listeners rip up your script because scripts kill confidence, right? They kill it. They're absolutely awful. Now, are messaging goals good? You bet. Are starter messaging samples good? Hey, absolutely. But what we like to do in a class is once you explain the process and the strategy and the goal, give them an example, maybe even listen to some samples of good ones and bad ones, then they write their own script. And for some people, it's word for word, and they're going to read it their first 20 calls. And for other people, it's nothing. And for other people, it's bullet points. But you cannot deliver my words confidently. It just doesn't work. And the vast majority of sales leaders out there are providing scripts, especially at that business development level, because that's considered sort of entry level into inside sales. Mm -hmm. And it it sounds like a script. It feels like a script. It smells like a script. Nobody's winning here, right? Let's let's try to not emulate telemarketing in B2C that we all freaking hate. Yep. Whose idea was it to copy that over into business to business? Mm-hmm. So, all right, because I agree with you. I'm, uh, I've been waiting for it. I, that was what, about 13 minutes in. He agrees with me. What did you call it? So you, you said goals. We said op- like a opening, like a tidbit, or what? What was the phrasing you used? Oh, like starters, messaging starters. starters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, starters because- are good. Samples are good. Yeah, because that's – and maybe that's what I'm thinking of as a script. Because, like, in, in my training, I was just – Saturday, I was speaking with a group. You know, like in retail sales, if I run up to you and say, hey, welcome to my store. How can I help? You know, you're going to say, uh, just looking. Just looking. Right? But if I walk up to you and I say, hey, welcome to the store. What brings you in today? Mm-hmm. Right? To me, that's a script. But I can see, like, in your world, it's, it's a starter. It's a sample. I, I because I'm, I'm not giving them 100% of the words to say, I, but I am giving them openings. Uh, I'm giving them ways to, you know, if it's like in football, right? If they run to the right, then we need to run to the defense's left and stop them. You know, it's, mm-hmm. there's, uh, but it'll always kind of evolve depending on who gets blocked, who doesn't get blocked, blah, blah, blah. You're uh, exactly right, which is why we think call recordings are huge because they're the equivalent of game tape. Yes. Amen. You gotta listen to it. And the biggest reason for that isn't to listen to the perfect call and emulate it. It's to get into the mind of the customer. Yeah. Right. So the reason yours worked and what you just said, Will, is or perfect Will. <laughs> Two hundred and seventy calls. Who, who are you? Four years. This is the first time I've ever been called Will. This is <laughs> this is a day of many firsts. Uh, please please continue, uh Lori Lane. Lori, uh, yes, I'm I'm uh, never gonna be invited back. <laughs> But the reason the reason what you said worked is that it, it engaged somebody differently. Right. Right. You know that somebody walking into a retail shop, 90% ask question A, and 99% of those responses are response B. Yeah. Right? Can I help you? No, just looking. So you have to mix it up. But what's your goal is to make them feel welcome, yep. to know that you're there. And what I hear your goal is you're trying to engage them in a conversation. Yes. So you asked an open question that was a little bit different. Yep. And that's exactly what you have to do in inside sales as well. In fact, that intro is critical. So what you just talked about was the greeting, same damn thing, right? Right. When I call you up and say, you must've clicked something and what can I do for you? It's it's just like A and B. The answer is nothing. I'm the wrong person. I'm all set. Get the hell off the phone. Yep. If you call up and try to add value and get them talking and engage, it's a whole different ballgame. In fact, Again, in the realm of BDRs, that business development rep, right? If you ask 100 BDRs, what's the goal of your call? 99 of them are going to tell you it's to book a meeting. And, and I'll tell you they're wrong. William, <laughs> trying to come up with w, the other W <laughs> now that I can screw this up with. So I'll tell you that's wrong because the goal of the call is engagement. And if you do that right, the outcome is a meeting. So it's a brain shift, right? right? But we're, we're basically saying the exact same thing. If you tell them what the goal is and an example of what brings you in today, they might come up with something that works for them a little better. Right. Very cool. I do like that. And it's kind of like, um, you know, I tell people that, like, you know, salespeople, like your number one job is not to sell. 
It's to, mm-hmm. it's to prospect, right? I mean, turn over stones. And I mean, the sale will come if you do enough of the right activities with the right people mm-hmm. uh, and engage them. Heaven mm-hmm. forbid. Uh, wow. Okay. Forbid. So we're coming up to the end. We are, Pete. I really appreciate you having me on the call today. And Amy, this has been fantastic. <laughs> uh, so what I like to ask at the end is, you know, imagine our listeners, they are, they're on a plane, they're, they're, on a bike, on a treadmill, they're jogging. They can't do anything right this second. But what what should they do as a result of listening to this? What action should they take as soon as they get to their desk um, to what should they put in the action right now to help grow their sales? Go listen to 10 calls. Go if, listen to 10 calls. Yep. If you're a rep, go listen to a top rep's 10 calls. Listen to the customer get into their head, see what's working and what's not. If you're in management, if you're in leadership, if you're a CEO, go listen to some of your new rep calls because that is your brand to the customer. And so many folks have gotten far away from that and they're they're not doing it anymore. And, And they're spending 3X the money on tools than they are on training and making sure that people know how to use those tools and that it's a conversation that they want accelerated anyway. Right. Right. So before you go invest in something that helps you call, you know, and have 20 X the conversations during the day, make sure you've got high quality in those conversations. Yep. Amen. All right. Amen. You know, I I really like your point of view. I like you today too. This has been fun. I call her Jane Smith, but online it's Lauren Bailey. Um, and you can find her, is it at factor eight, the number eight? That's correct. Factor eight dot com. Uh, you're there on the Twitter and on the YouTube, yes, sir. You're probably on the facey bookie. And so we'll, we'll find that as well. Well, um, uh, but thanks for, you know, turning on the air conditioning, uh, fixing up your hair, uh, <laughs> Not, not, uh, not stopping your day, letting, letting people just come right in during the interview, you know, despite all of that, my name. You're calling me the wrong name. This has been a fantastic interview. Nailed it. Thank Ladies you. Gentlemen, nailed it right here. Yeah. LB. Whoops, home Perfect. run, baby. Walk off. There's Lauren. Strike drop. Up around the bases. <laughs> I love it. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. And, all and, right. Um, I'll say it twice because you'll never have me back. <laughs> you know what? Oh, I just hit delete on accident. Hey, you know, thanks anyway, though. It was uh, really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lauren Bailey, y'all go check it out. Factor8.com, inside sales training. Get it done. Get it done right. Get it done, Laura. Thanks for coming on the show. Have a great thanks, day. Laura. You too. Bye. Go listen to 10 calls and let me know that you did. Very few will, but those who will do what others won't will soon be living like others can't. You got the advice, right? You got the strategy, you have the input, uh, you have the motivation, I hope. Um, So what's stopping you? It's time to go deep, dig deep, dig deep into your business. Um, You know, I think we're coming up on uh, the top of another real estate bubble. Things are going to slow down going into, I think, into 2018. Certainly sometime in 2018, I mean, the, the Fed keeps raising interest rates. Um, looking at the, the markets just today, I was seeing something. Plus, I, I know where I live. Uh, I've seen things go up. Our house is way up. Um, some agents that I have um, that are friends, they were actually guests on the sales podcast, one of the top uh, husband-wife teams, uh, top firms in the nation. I think they're number one in California. Uh, they're talking about uh, expecting foreclosures in 2018. So as things start to slow down, as real estate tops out, interest rates go up, you know, I mean, we're going to have slow down. It's just, it's just the business cycle. Inhale, exhale. Uh, Things are going to get a little bit tougher. And when you make the steps, when you put in the, the effort, when you do the hard right things now, right? When you dig your well before you're thirsty, you'll be ready for it. So don't just listen to this, okay? Take this advice. Do what she recommends. Get better at inside sales. Go listen. Go analyze. Go study. If you can measure it, you can improve it. So go measure and analyze your your calls and then get them better. If you want some help, when I got serious about selling, I hired a coach. And uh, the first thing he had me do was record my calls. And then we listened to them together. And it was brutal. 
But you know what? It wasn't brutal for long, and I got better. And that's why I was able to leave corporate America with a big family, being the sole uh, income provider, and make it as a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. So go do it. All right? Check out digdeep.today for some one-on-one help, and then make every sale.com while it's still lifetime access. You'll be glad you did. As usual, thanks for listening. Please share this. Leave a five-star review. And now, go sell something.